svůj pas. Dobrý den, good morning. Dobrý den, srdce pozdravím, good morning. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to be invited to this event and of course uh, uh, it is the first opportunity for me to also join Slovakia on the Armenian soil and uh, uh, really I am glad that uh, we are the country which has a lot to share with Armenia and uh, all our positive experience of the process of uh, reforms even in civilian security sector uh, is uh, also the good experience on Slovakian side. And uh, if you allow me, uh, I will just uh, say a few words at the beginning that I would like to stress also according my experiences in other countries of the world, including an African continent and uh, really I can say that I cannot stress enough the value of national ownership of civilian security sector that will ensure that security, civilian security sector processes are locally driven and sustainable. This is the most and firm precondition of the final success. Because every nation state has an obligation to ensure security for itself and its citizens. And every state differs slightly in terms of which agencies make up the security sector, what these agencies are called, and how they are delineated under each government's own particular administrative structure. And I am uh, witnessing for this short period of time here in Armenia that it is really the same case of this country. And uh, I am convinced that really Slovakia is the country which can share a lot. And we have also the formats which could be successfully applicable here in your period of civilian security sector reform. And uh, I'd like to ensure you that Slovak Embassy and me personally will be always on your assistance and I would be proud to share with you all the Slovakian experiences. Thank you very much. And now I'm overhanding to our headquarters in Slovakia. Uh, thank you very much, Your Excellency. And now, yes, please, uh, you, you, you may start with the presentation. And I'm just turning on the screen sharing. Okay. Thank Anna. Thank uh, Mr. Ambassador. Good morning, everyone, to your amazing country. It's a, a great honor for me to have the opportunity to ad address you, the distinguished participants that gathered here today. I would like to emphasize that this paper reflects my personal opinion based on experience gained while working at the Ministry of Defense of the Slovak Republic and at NGOs which have been dealing with such issues for a long time. I can say I was a contemporary witness of the security community building in uh, Slovakia. I composed my presentation into four main topics besides introduction and conclusion. First, the corn cornerstones of the history of Slovakia, then situation in the Central Europe after the end of Cold War. Next, development of the Slovak security community depending on the security and defense policy. 
And uh, last but not least, the formation for the Slovak security com community achievement and, and failures from this process. And after the conclusion, in the end of the presentation, of course, questions and answers. Uh, I would like to add that in case of Slovakia, before 1989, during the communist time, we spoke about the unity of army and the people, not about the civil military relation or, or about, this, uh, about the civil society or, or, or civil security community. Then since 1990, we speak about the democratic control of armed forces. And about since 1997, we start to, to, to speak about civil military relations. And after that, we came to the uh, security community and, and uh, security sector reform. The slide, slide number three, it's cornerstones of, of the history of Slovakia. For a better understanding, of the position of Slovakia after the Cold War, I would like to start my presentation by a short excursion into the Slovak history of the previous century. I will begin, begin with an excerpt of the historical cornerstone stones which had the big influence on the evolution of the Slovak statehood. In the end of the First World War, the educated Slovak and, and Czechs People, Czech people living abroad agreed on the need to create common state of Slovaks and Czechs. It was a big step to the future because before 1918, Slovakia did not exist as a state. It formed a north part or territory of Hungary where people spoke Slovak. Hungary together with Austria, as you no form austria hungarian empire in that time. You can see it on the map. The first Czechoslovak Republic arose, arose in the end of the October 1980 and it lasted until 1939. In March of that year, Czechoslovakia was divided into the protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia and Slovak state, which was later renamed Slovak Republic. Slovak Republic was under the supervision of the fascist Germany. Next slide. The Czechoslovak Republic was restored immediately after the Second World War. Its name kept changing in according to the political circumstances. Excuse me, from... have, you, have you turned the slide sharing on because we don't see the slides? No. No? Mm, no, okay. I sent I send, I send you this. Uh, presentation for the old people, for the old participants. Uh, uh, okay, then uh, I, I would need to open it here. I thought you would share it on via Zoom. Okay, I may need to then just a minute uh, because this is the hotel's computer, so I'll need to download it again.
we are now on slide three, right? Can continue with slide four. Yes, yes. So, so yeah, corner slot. I share it with you as well. Yeah. Okay. May I continue or? So, can you see it now? Yes, I don't need it. Okay, may I continue? Yes, yes, sure, please. Okay, the Czechoslovak Republic was restored immediately after the Second World War. Its name kept changing in according to the political circumstances from the Czechoslovak Republic through Czechoslovak Socialist Republic to Czech and Slovak Federative Republic in the end of 1992. Current Slovak Republic was created on the 1st of January 1993 after the dissolution of the common state with Czechs. The application for the succession after Czechoslovak Federation and not after the Slovak Republic from the years 1939 to 1945 had a significant importance for the fairly fast process of the international diplomatic recognition of the new state. Slide number five. Uh, situation in the Central Europe after the end of Cold War. After the decline of the bipolar world, the Central European countries theoretically had several option, options how to solve the security situation. Czechoslovakia with, the, with Hungary and Poland created so-called Visegrad group to have four bi basic security options. The first was North Atlantic option. Most of the political allied in the three later four countries mentioned above considered this option not seeing any other realistic alternative. The reason was among others the fact that NATO was the most successful alliance in the history and the only security organizations that provided thanks to Article 5 of the Washington Treaty solid security guarantees in case of an invasion. The provision of security guarantees that moved these countries from the existing so-called gray zone was very important for them. Second, it was the West European option. An advantage of this option, integration into EU and WEU consisted in its better acceptance in the public opinion. Another advantage was a wider and more conceptual range of security solution for the region because it added the stabilizing economic integration to the political military instrument. A weak point of this option was the WEU did not avail of our military capacity allowing to provide security guarantees. Moreover, the more complicated system, system of membership categories did not provide to these countries what they needed in that period, security guarantees during the transition period. Third, it was neutrality option. The ne neutrality option was popular in Czechoslovakia and Hungary before the disintegration of the Soviet Union. However, with the termination of traditional antagonism, 
of two super superpowers powers, the concept of neutrality became meaningless for the Central European countries. The theory of neutrality emerged in Slovakia just after the declaration of the international sovereignty in some summer 1992 and with higher intensity again during the year 1995 in relation to the pessimistic reaction of many Western politicians to the integration of Slovakia in NATO already in the first round. Fourth Central European option, this option implied a lot of theoretical and practical problems. The reason of the impact, impractability, impractability of this option was beside of the abilities of the political lie to even consider this option. This the insufficient defense and security potential also in the case of the close cooperation of these countries to defend the region. This cooperation was most functional during the liquidation of the Warsaw Pact and the withdrawal of Soviet troops from the region. The accession of the Czech Republic, Poland and Hungary to NATO in 1999 put an end to even theoretical considerations of this option. As you know, we chose the first option that is North Atlantic orientation. Following topic, top, topic is the development of the Slovak security community in years 1990-2004. It is a structured view on the interaction among security and defense policy, armed forces redeployment after the common state this solution and security community development. I will speak much more deeply about that in the following part, the formation of the Slovak security community achievement and failures. This part is not essential to our topic. So I will skip that. But if you want to know more about it, we can discuss in question and answers, please, we will continue with the slide number 18. Yes. It is a formation of the Slovak security community achievement and failure, failures, please. Please slide 18. Yeah. This formation of the Slovak security community achievements and failures. In the age of the global threat, security community has become an important pillar of national security in every country. It represents a vital binder between a state and citizen between a capital city and regions. However, within the Slovak conditions, a formation of the security community, which is based on mutual confidence and a rotation of people among governmental private and non-governmental sector needed one further generation or more. The importance of the security community in Slovakia has increased due to the integration since ambitions and commitments of NATO member, as well as task connected, task connected with the European security in defense policy in the time now common security and defense policy can be completely implemented only by means of 
interaction among the departmental experts and the parliamentary ground, party central offices, academic community, journalists, analysts, businessmen, and public opinion makers. I need for expert and independent discussion about Slovakia's direct direction and position in international relations became an impetus to establish the think tank institution in Slovakia. The Slovak Institute of International Studies was the first scientific research institution of the type established at the beginning of 1993. Unfortunately, an aim to create the think tank in the manner of British Chatham House or American Council of Foreign Relations did not come true partially due to indifference of a then governmental garniture to functioning of such an institution and partially because of the founder tragic death. Paradoxically, the only institution that exists from the early establishment of the Slovak Republic and the only one that engaged exclusively in the security and defense issues was the Strategic Studies Center at the Ministry of Defense. Both institutions were not standard NGOs since the founders were state authorities, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Ministry of Defense. This fact had a great, predominantly negative impact on both institutions because the founders, due to intensive and non-systematic reorganizations of the, of the structures and personal changes in different periods set back the development and thus a development of the security community in Slovakia. Slide number 19, who formed the security com community in Slovakia? The process of our security community formation demonstrated a need to include not only non-governmental organizations engaged in security issues, but also so deputies, as I said, academic community, journalists and media, civilian as well as military experts, representatives of public administration, but also every citizen who was interested in the security and defense issues. Each of them has its unique place in this mosaic. Also in Slovakia, NGOs play the most important role. They involve the widest range of qualified experts and are able to elaborate and publish independent analysis, organize expert think tanks, and thus contribute in a sense to increase in public knowledge in area of security and defense policy. The non-governmental organization better say think tanks in the security sphere, sphere represent the most important player engaged directly in civil control of the armed forces in the first period and indirectly in the democratic control. The Slovak conditions which were in the examined period characterized by the lack of experts on security and military policy did not allow constitute the security commu community as a network of institutions, but only of individuals. In the 90s, the process of the security community formation within NGOs was influenced by a long-term absence of institution which would comprehensively engage in purely security issues. 
it was a rather a matter of individuals who engaged in the security alongside a wider specialization of the institution. Moreover, final, so financial resources coming from abroad were gradually reduced and search for internal resources for this area was quite problematic. Despite the fact, we can say that non-governmental organization played and play a cornerstone, cornerstone of the security community in Slovakia. During an initial period when the civil military relations in Slovakia were formed, NGOs replaced even the academic community, which was passing through the transformation in terms of personal and contents. In the educational area of security perception, a task of academic community resides in a research firm as well as in preparation of future experts in the security realm. After new faces join it, it has gradually become one of the most dynamic parts of the security community. Nevertheless, Slovakia's integration to the Euro-Atlantic structures has demonstrated it will take some time to prepare a sufficient number of well-prepared experts for work in the whole spectrum of the Euro-Atlantic institutions. Independent journalists and media will always play an irreplaceable role in the democratic society, since they have provided the public with basic information concerning this field. However, it is necessary to point out that there in Slovakia, there were and are almost no journalists who would pursue the security issues regularly and without sensation seeking. In Slovakia, a relation armed forces, media, media had evolved continually since the establishment of the independent state. However, regarding the lack of the qualified journalists pursuing the security and defense area, it was a matter of rather one way information flow running from the defense department towards the public. Nevertheless, this development was not always fully continuous and did not have only a rising tendency. However, there has always been an effort to attain professionalism. Relations with media from the Defense Department point of view were based mainly on mutual communication. On one hand, it was communication through journalists. And on the other hand, it was a direct communication with public administration, local governments, organization cooperating with the armed forces and particular citizens. Quite important part of the communication system was also a communication inwards the armed forces, particularly after the professionalization of the armed forces in 2006. The communication with the public and media must be based on openness and truthfulness. After the decades when the only published information were related to a successful building of the people army and even more successful training with partners of the Warsaw Pact, the information doors has suddenly opened to the military quarters too. The area that used to represent Tabu have all of a sudden become accessible. It was a grand turning, turning point. The big points in terms of communication between the Defense Department and media have resided in absence 
of special courses and medial training for responsible commanders. On the other hand, it was possible to observe that the Defense Department did not have medial partners able for constructive thinking and contextual awareness who would also critically but purposefully engage in the defense policy. The independent group involved military experts or experts coming from military environment, those represented the greatest expert group among all the mentioned elements of the security sector for a long time. Another component of the security community was formed by the parliamentary deputies and representatives of public administration, who as democratically elected representatives of the citizen should occupy the top of the hierarchy within this community since they can directly influence legislation or important decisions, both to parliamentary committees and public hearings. This represent, represents a kind of double track between the society and the government. On one hand, the deputies represent public interests, and on the other hand, they give sense to the governmental decisions towards voters. However, the number of deputies who clearly understood a new security concept was low. The parliamentary control of the Slovak Republic Armed Forces has had dominant position within the civil democratic control. It has educated, executed by authorities elected in, in the Slovak National Council and implemented in four main areas, legislation, budget, control through executive power representative, control through own elected authorities, committees. Since 1993, the situation within the governmental control of the armed forces has considerably improved in Slovakia. A turning point came in years 2000-2002 when the parliament participated in preparation and approval of the strategic security documents. Regarding the place and the role of regional public administration and local government, unresolved legislative, legislative questions concerning security and crisis management had a considerable impact on the regions too. On the one hand, the laws had inside, assigned some responsibilities to a local government, but on the other hand, the local government had few competencies and particularly the lack of finance. We see these discrepancies now during the, the COVID pandemic. Slide number 20, development of the security community in Slovakia. In terms of influence on political process and political decisions, in the security and defense area, the security community has the greatest possibility of, of action within a theoretical field. In the matter of a practical influence, everything depends on approach of the governmental organizations, ministries, to what extent they, they are able to use its theoretical potential. The potential of the Slovak security community was marginalized for a long time, particularly in the 1990s. At first, a decisive sphere did not treat, treat it as a partner. The reason can be summarized in the following points. First, the lack of civilian experts with contemporary education willing to work in the security community. Second, surplus of 
contemporary experts with military political education who often consider themselves to be a light of the decisive sphere. We saw it at the Ministry of Defense because we have a lot of former political uh, deputies, you know this this uh, this name Politrux, in in uh, in the organization of the Minister of Defense. A change occurred between 2001 and 2003 when the state administration started to realize qualitative changes in communication with the security community in Slovakia, on the one hand and the lack of its own capacities in obtaining public support of integration on the other hand. Moreover, the integration efforts were practically impossible without adequate civil, civilian military relations. Finally, accumulation of tasks in that period meeting political criteria enabling NATO and EU accession, as well as particular reform processes, force the state administration to establish closer cooperation with the security community. In a relatively short time, the community managed to create good, also limited basis, ba limited basis, particularly in the capital city. At the regional level, the process was much more time consuming and a number of NGOs working at this level is still minimal. It was a period of formulation of the basic strategic documents when the Slovak security community gained its first experience in the sphere which was until they dominated purely by civil servants and soldiers. For example, the Slovak security strategy 2001 as the first document of so great importance was published even during its preparation. It was released on internet with the possibility to comment on it. Moreover, it was sent to the corporate organizations, non-governmental organization or academic community. The discussions and colloquia were organized even at international level. On the one hand, experience gained thanks to a participation of the security community in the security documents development proved to be right. But on the other hand, it demonstrated that the Slovak security community was only in its infancy. Generally, only some individuals and a minimum of the address organizations or civil association with relation to security or to the whole spectrum of a civil society participated in the project. Sometimes they participated, but they uh, thanks or, or something like that, that was totally different. It was former communist time, not the future of, the, of our new, new membership uh, in NATO or EU. A process of fast changes which had affected Central Europe did not enable to stabilize the Slovak security community in an adequate manner. The greatest problem the community has had to cope with its insufficient financing. It lasted almost 10 years to start a grant system at the Ministry of Defense. By the way, 
Two weeks ago, Minister of Defense announced call for year 2021. The grant system exists at other ministries, but for the security and defense on MOD and MFA only. Slate 2000, uh, sorry, 21. Slovak experience of the security community formation and its possible use in other countries. Uh, Slovak experience of the security community formation can be summarized in the following points. A cornerstone of the security community was laid by enthusiastic individu individuals who established reputable NGOs. The NGOs, the second, the NGOs in the security and defense area have developed particularly from the organization engaged in the foreign policy issues. Then I would be very, it would be very difficult to establish the security community without assistance of foreign donors and cooperation with the NGOs from developed democratic countries. Even the best project can't be carried out without an adequate financial support. There must be an interest, the last but not least, there must be an interest in a particular cooperation which comes from the states for Achievements and failures of the security community in Slovakia. Achievements. The first gradual increase in influence upon democracy development within a governance system. Greater interest of the NGOs and expert circles in the foreign policy issues, which influence also a connection to the security and defense issues, rise in public interest and particularly interest of students in the security and defense issues, partial increase in transparency within the strategic documents preparation, as interest in the use of the Slovak experience in, the, in other countries of Eastern and South Southern Europe, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia, Montenegro, partially Ukraine, established of a new security community able to perform several key activities. For example, Panorama of Global Security Environment, a unique publication providing view of predominantly Slovak civilian and military expert on development of a global security and environment which is published annually and started in uh, 2004. Uh, the aim of this of this publication was to give new students the possibility to to write the second one, it was uh, to have for other students the publication for the, for the study. And third, it was a project of civil military relations, uh, uh, Institute for Security and Defense Studies on the one side, and many experts from the, from the uh, civil NGOs on the other hand, on the other side. Report on Slovakia, a unique publication devoted to the Slovak society development. National Convent, the Slovak Foreign Policy Asso Association project, reputable also abroad. Many journals, Zahraničná politika, international affairs, Euro Atlantic Quarterly. 
strategic analysis. Summer School for Young Professionals, organized by, at the time, existed Center for European and North Atlantic and Affairs in cooperation with Academy of the Slovak Armed Forces and with support from Friedrich Eber Stiftung. This uh, summer school was organized partially four days in Liptovsky Mikulaj and three days in Slovakia and three days in Ukraine in city Užhorod. Uh, this, this summer school was organized for the foreign students of political science and international affairs, the first from Balkans, but later from all the board. And then this small, small events like Slovak Strategic Forum on the ESDP or Slovak Sec Security Forum and last but not least, the best known conference of global security, GLOBSEC. Something about the failures, it's a slide for 24. Wage or frequently modified legislation on the NGOs functioning and funding. Insufficient number of national grants led to the great dependence on foreign donors who shifted the assistance to other regions after the Slovakia joined NATO and EU. Insufficient degree of coordination, experience and information exchange among the NGOs in the security and defense area. Dissolution of the Institute for Security and Defense Studies uh, at MOD which used to be a coordinator of cooperation between the Defense Department and the third sector within the security community. And last but not least, failure to provide the public with sufficient explanations concerning influence of new global challenges and threats on the uh, security community. For example, in uh, 2002, we organized uh, the Ministry of Defense or Institute with, with uh, Center for European and North Atlantic Affairs, one discussion or, or, or a workshop about the possible pandemic and how to react on, on this, this uh, pandemic. Uh, but nobody, nobody accept our, our conclusion from, from this, this uh, project. And now we are in the similar situation, but it is, the situation is real. Ongoing problems that require the attention. First of all, it is necessary to solve support and development of the security community. Plus, it is state support, grants. There is no assumption it will increase in a considerable way. The state administration still regards itself as sufficiently component to solve all the problems on its own. Moreover, during the previous periods, it had to allocate a great part of budget on particular reforms. Foreign support, the tendency of its shift to the countries of Southern and Eastern Europe and Asia will continue. It is normal. The security community will have to focus on NATO resources or EU funds or on common projects with the NGOs from the already mentioned regions. National non-state resources will be probably oriented or are oriented rather to area of macro and micro economy. A greater chance of development is on the part of the of university scientific and research workplaces pursuing the security and defense area 
at national as well as well as international level we have three or four universities now uh, which uh, which have um, as, uh, where the student can can study uh, security and international relation and security studies the ngos cooperation at national and international level they still beg the question whether it is necessary to establish a kind of umbrella organization ngos in the security and defense area at the at the national level at international level, it will be probably the most progressive to consider the possibility of cross regional cooperation. For example, Central European one sent by means of establishing the virtual regional research institution. A good example is Central European Institute of Asian Studies, which parts are Austria, Czech Republic, and uh, Slovakia. Um, Ten years ago, or 15 years ago, we discussed about the possibility to create virtual, virtual institution from the Ministry of Defense uh, of the Visegrad countries but it not happened. Finally, I would like to present you a conclusions resulting from the brainstorming which took place on 10th of October 2003 and the end of the democratic control of armed forces project in the regions of Slovakia. The brainstorming aim was to define priorities that should be pursued by building civil military relation, later security community in Slovakia. Also, this event took place 17 years ago. Its conclusions are applicable even nowadays and can help countries currently passing through this process. Following knowledge, knowledge gained during the regional seminars, the organizer defined three basic areas that were discussed in the time. Civil control of armed forces, it was the first phase, civil military relation in the regions, and the security sector reform within particular areas, the participating expert agreed on the following priorities. You have it in uh, slates 27, 28, and 20, 29. Uh, this uh, eight regional projects was very interesting for us because it was first time but in history when the military in uniform came to the region and in the workshop with this whole spectrum of the, the uh, region speak or spoke, we are in uniform, please control us. It was something untypical but it was very important because the, the first time we can discuss with people in this region about the problems about the relation with armed forces with new redeployment after the dissolution of, of uh, Czechoslovakia and so on and so on. So only uh, very shortly to, to this, to this uh, conclusion, uh, the first of all, it was very important to have legislation issues for the formal level of control. It means 
Parliament, Government, uh, Security Council, Ministry of Defense, to have strict competitions and responsibilities. And at that time, as I said, we had a problem with theoretical base for the building of uh, uh, security community. Then it was very important to, to, to know the mission of armed forces, because before, as I said, we had in the territory of Slovakia only two training division and eight from 10 uh, uh, academies and 10 from 12 uh, uh, what is it say you, in a, I use uh, I use a Russian Russian uh, word was this why any uh, and of course because before we don't have the system as a uh, education system for the new situation after after the communist time, we need to prepare completely education system. And uh, of course, to start informal control that very important are public discussions about, not only about strategic document, but about the, the problems in, 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 in the region. Uh, to have critical media, how to assess the um, civil military relation or, or armed forces or, or security. And uh, overall will play the local governments. And in that time, we discussed uh, con uh, Conclusory service. In that time, we have uh, any feedback from from the armed forces because people, young young men, came came back to to the to the civil uh, environment. But after after the professional professionalism professional professional army, this feedback was very low. Uh, second, the civil military relation in regions. It means the interaction of players in the, in the region, a relation between the local government and the garrison commanders. And of course, the position of the garrison in that, in, in that region. The, after the change of of the system, a lot of cities don't want to have a military garrison in, in, in the region or in the city, but only one, one um, uh, interesting feedback from one small city that after the the redeployment of armed forces, the first who leave, lived from the city was only one bank. And then it was uh, at last or one of one, only one cash point. It was a problem to the people after, after the, the leave of the armed forces for the, for the real, real life. And uh, after this first period, we start, it was about 2001, 2002, about the security sector reform, because we understood that not only our forces is a, a object of a reform, but 
all all uh, part of the uh, security sector. Of course, we focused only on 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 uh, armed forces, and now we have a big problem. For example. Uh, with judge system, which is a very important part of, of security sector. So that we have a lot of experience from, from, from this uh, period of, of the uh, civil military relation of the building of, of security community, but we don't use all used all of, of them to change this system. Sometimes I think that we stopped after the first two phases of the security sector reform. So I go to the conclusion. The main task, task of the security community is to balance the relation between political and military leaders in process of security and defense policy formation. The Slovak experience has proved that building the security community represents a long-term process which did not finish after the integration to the Euro-Atlantic structures. The Slovak experience, as well as experience of other Central Europe countries, has proved that after the integration, a majority of governmental guarantors have limited the, their cooperation with the third, third sector, since the third, third sector becomes rather a mirror of the actions than a kind of helpmate. The cooperation between the security community and the governmental sphere within a security sector it used to be limited for a long time by isolation of national security issues and a spirit of secretiveness. Also, formal changes came about very quickly and after 1993, the national security system or its institutions claimed cooperation with civil society a change in thinking of, of governmental representatives lasted much longer. This change was supported by active work of NGOs and academic community or foundations engaged in security and defense issues since 1995. In Slovakia, the security community became an equal partner for a national institution only after 2002. Thus, a limited number still remains the weakest point of the security community. Moreover, there is a lack of NGOs that would engage not only in analytic world, but also in national security sector control and represent a strong partner in this governmental sphere. This represents the most limiting factor within depending of transparency in the security sector. Furthermore, a majority of security community elements operate in the capital city and just a limited number works at the regional level. For a long time, there was no system which would prepare experts for security issues. Mutual professional contacts between a governmental and non-governmental sector were limited. An important role with the development of civil military relation was played by non-governmental or academic organizations and foundations, as I said. Also after 2000, 
other NGOs started to engage within the sphere of security issues, they were oriented rather at areas of education and providing information about NATO and ESDP. And after Slovakia's accession to Euro Atlantic structures, they restrained or completely revoked their activities. In terms of NGOs activation within the security and defense policy, the role of foreign partners would, uh, was unambiguously the most important one. The non-governmental organization and independent research centers from the Western Europe, as well as the US, not only supported an interest of the civil and society in the security and defense issues, but also initiated and systematically financed, financed engagement of domestic non-governmental organization in cooperation with national institution of the security sector. The control of the armed forces activities through budgetary rules and departmental expenses represents the most effective tool which the public thanks to the parliament but also media can apply in the era of informal control there are some problems that are partially caused by shortcomings in the formal control area in the regions a troubleshooting field of civil military relation concentrated concentrates on interaction between civil and military actors in the region. A dominant position pertains to the relation between a local government and military garrisons or between mayors and commanders. An example of communicating the armed forces reform has demonstrated that a failure of communication flows with only minor exceptions between defense department and the local governments or the public in regions is partially caused by the lack of well elaborated communication strategy on the part of the Slovak Republic Ministry of Defense. Moreover, the local governments criticized an absence of anal analysis, analysis which which would target economic, ecological, and social influence of the armed forces in the regions. They perceived the armed forces mainly in terms of handling the emergency situations. On one hand, it was proved that local governments would play a more important role with an informal control of armed forces, but also that the center would have to pay much more attention to harmonization of state and regional interests in the security realm. Experience gained with the civil society development in Slovakia has proved that to reform civil military relations and bring the armed forces under the public control is not enough. It is necessary to enlarge the democratic control to an area of the whole security sector. Thank you very much for your attention. Now I'm prepared for your questions. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Now uh, we have an expert who will prepare a uh, paper with recommendations for the government uh, based on these seminars. And he's uh, fully involved in this sphere in Armenia, Atashas Khalatian. Unfortunately, in a few minutes, he has to leave. So I'll uh, give the floor to him now for some comments. Okay. Just, uh, thank just you. Second. Thank you, Your Excellency, for your presence and uh, thank you. Uh, for your interesting presentation, <clears throat> for an interesting presentation, <clears throat> uh, 
my name is Artashes Halachan. I am uh, working in uh, the office of the uh, Prime Minister of the Republic of Armenia. And also, I'm an expert in the Armenian Institute of uh, uh, International and Security Affairs. Um, uh, the problems and uh, the challenges that you mentioned, uh, which Slovakia faced uh, after the communization uh, period is uh, also common for us. And uh, now uh, after the Artsakh war, uh, the Armenian government is uh, in the process of revolution of the current stance of our uh, security and uh, defense uh, issues. Uh, <clears throat> one of the main obstacles uh, for, for us now is uh, the uh, technical uh, situation, the technical expertise and the lack of uh, uh, military technical means in our uh, armed forces, which we are going to equip uh, both with uh, new uh, technical means, new weapons, and also with um, a more developed, more educated uh, staff. And now the government pays uh, very big attention to uh, military education. And um, uh, we uh, closely cooperate in these uh, issues with uh, not only with uh, Russia, which is our uh, ally, but also trying to cooperate, cooperate with NATO as far as um, our uh, geopolitical situation and our international obligations um, uh, permit us. Uh, one of our uh, close uh, partners in this issue uh, is Greece, our longtime partner, and we also have uh, exchange programs with them. Uh, our uh, soldiers and uh, officers um, uh, attend the uh, military uh, institutions and uh, also their staff come and uh, have seminars and uh, short briefings with our um, military staff. Uh, thanks to uh, NATO sponsored programs, we have also uh, well, a close cooperation with the US and France in this issue too. Uh, the second uh, uh, problem that we are trying to solve is uh, the openness, uh, more openness of the, our defense uh, ministry and defense system. We understand that uh, due to uh, some delicate security uh, issues, uh, state secrets, etc. The uh, defense uh, sphere cannot be open as far as much as other uh, spheres of uh, state governance, but um, at least uh, the Europe, uh, uh, the European expertise in this uh, uh, issue can help us to find some balance between state security, but also democratic uh, supervision over the armed forces and formation of defense policy. Uh, it, it, is, uh, uh, it was very interesting to know how your defense uh, strategy document was formed. Uh, it is uh, quite a novelty for us, for me uh, in particular, but it can be a very good uh, example how can uh, society participate in formation even of such a delicate and a more uh, expert-based uh, uh, documents like uh, defense um, uh, strategy document. Uh, we uh, uh, have a new uh, uh, defense and security policy document uh, which was issued last year. And uh, the main uh, body which coordinated the formation of this document was uh, the national uh, the uh, national security council, which um, is a uh, under our uh, newly um, uh, newly adopted constitution, like amended constitution, or let's say, uh, a quite a quite uh, a quite big uh, 
uh, <clears throat> powers and uh, you, our defense policy uh, is formulated by this by this body and our uh, uh, nation minister of uh, defense um, is obliged to uh, act under this um, uh, document. Uh, but uh, the main problem that we saw during formation of this document it is ill openness for the public. So uh, uh, also uh, the civil uh, NGOs uh, did not uh, participate uh, as much as we wanted to uh, in this uh, information of this uh, document. And that is why uh, uh, there were some concerns whether this document like affects uh, the realities uh, of Armenia. And uh, after uh, this war, I think that we uh, uh, will have a need to um, reshape this document to address all the needs and uh, necessities of Armenia uh, in post-war uh, period. And the third issue that I, I want to mention is the situation after Velvet Revolution, because Velvet Revolution is not the aimed to uh, like stop to eradicate the authoritarian or semi-authoritarian government and the, practici the practices of uh, semi-authoritarian governance in Armenia, including also uh, security and defense uh, bodies, their manner of work, um, uh, the, uh, some, uh, the interrelations of some of high security and defense officials with some corruption issues and to reshape these bodies according to best practices adopted in the EU, in the US. And uh, I want to uh, mention that now uh, we are in, uh, in the process of deep reforms in the police system, in the state security system. We will have a minister of interior soon, which uh, will include uh, the police and the, some civil services, which are including in police, but uh, per se, they are uh, more pertinent to uh, the Minister of Interior system, which is adopted in many countries of the EU, like uh, issues, uh, issuance of passports, uh, resident permits, uh, migration issues, uh, like, um, uh, and so, some other like, uh, such civil um, uh, services and we will have a minister of interior which will uh, be a, a civil serviceman who will uh, supervise uh, the police issues and all this system and will be an, like an intermediary um, organ uh, between uh, prime minister and between the police between this system and it will help uh, the government to uh, boost more open, uh, well, more more open activity by the police, and the uh, the same uh, reforms will uh, take part concerning our state security service, which is also going to become a ministry, as far as I am informed. Uh, and we will have a new. Um, uh, police uh, uh, police uh, department, uh, will, which will combine uh, our former uh, like road police and uh, our um, uh, patrol. Uh, patrol police. Uh, and uh, we, uh, you know, we will employ and we are employing the good uh, practice of Georgia in this uh, field and we are in, uh, government is in close ties with our Georgian counterparts to uh, uh, get to know uh, their practice uh, better. And now I'm delivering the lecture for future petrol policemen in the Police Academy of Armenia and we'll have them in June or July uh, in charge in Armenian, like let's say streets. Uh, they will provide uh, new services, not only uh, fix the road, uh, 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 
uh, violations of uh, the road uh, uh, transport rules, uh, but also uh, they will uh, uh, be in charge of like um, control of the uh, law abiding uh, 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 stance in uh, uh, roads, uh, in, not only the road, but in cities and other uh, regions of Armenia, they will um, detect uh, these uh, uh, infractions of uh, law and they will uh, assist other uh, uh, departments of police and uh, law enforcement agencies to find the criminals, uh, to uh, deter uh, criminal acts, etc. It is uh, the U.S. model of uh, patrol police that uh, is widespread uh, phenomenon. And uh, I think that we are uh, uh, we uh, are in a good way uh, to uh, fully accommodate the international best practice to have more democratic. Uh, national and defense policy. And uh, I would like to say that the institution uh, which I affiliated with, the uh, Armenian Institution on International and Security Affairs is uh, one of the leading think tanks in Armenia, uh, which tries to uh, assist our government in terms of more um, informed, uh, more education-based, uh, uh, more expert-based uh, to have uh, more expert-based documents, more to adopt more informed and uh, expert-based decisions. And I would like to also to inform you that the head of this institution is the head of public council of the Armenian government, uh, which is a, a constitutional body, a consultative body to the uh, Armenian uh, government. And we uh, try to boost also uh, domestic NGOs uh, to be more involved in shaping our national and defense policy. And uh, we, will, we are trying to have a new department is our, in our educational institutions to have an experts, not just uh, lay experts who are just uh, interested in these issues, but to have political scientists, uh, more uh, 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 just uh, informed experts who will who will uh, just not only just speak about these issues uh, super, uh, uh, superficially, but who are more involved in this in also academic uh, terms. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, Vladimir, would you like to respond to some of the other comments maybe? Uh, we cannot hear. I would like to say that we had similar problems at the beginning of this security community building. It was this uh, problem with uh, with uh, secretiveness that in, oh, 10 years ago, we had at the Ministry of Defense about uh, 300 area of the of the uh, under the, the, the secret secret uh, issues so it was very difficult to cooperate with with the, the, the with this uh, department at that time but of course it is very important to go step by step and to to prepare young people because we were in the situation and i said it that we have a lot of experts from the former former uh, military political ac political academy, uh, where then our Ministry of Defense were created on base of this, this academy, and to discuss with them about the new new situation in in the world and the uh, security environment was very very difficult. It was very difficult to change something. So that it was very important to, to start or we started with, with a very, very 
how to say, the seminars, it was a small seminars to, to educate, to educate the people, new young students about, about this problem. After, after six years of the security community was existing in Slovakia, we had the first young person who was involved in this in the security studies or security security work so now it is it is very good because what was very important that we created uh, security programs in education system in uh, three or four universities and for example we as i was a deputy in the Institute for Security and Defense Studies. Our first employees, this uh, researcher, young people, uh, are now state secretary and on the position of high position in uh, the ministry. So that it is not a target for, for two or three years. So sometimes, no, it always depends on the, on the government. Sometimes we were on the left maintenance, by the left maintenance, then on the other. It was very difficult to continue, continue this, this work uh, in the same, same way. So, uh, and the, the strategies, so of course we, started cooperation with uh, civil society or or the security security community uh, during the the uh, phase of of the preparation for member member in nato because we were criticized for our preparation of, of documents and uh, we don't have four years after the, uh, or eight, nine years after, after the uh, five years, we, we didn't have the strategic documents, what we, what we would like to do in the future. So that it was, it was very important. Uh, and at my personal point of view, that was very important for us, for Slovakia, that after the Velvet Revolution, we don't, we, we, we continue as a one republic next two years, so two, three years, because in that time was uh, made a lot of, or did a lot of, a lot of uh, things or, or the formal, formal, uh, formal um, control of the of the uh, Slovakia so after that as I said we have a lot of problem in the, the formal formal approach to, to the to the accession to to NATO thank you very much and yes I during your presentation, I could uh, immediately see that parallel with the 90s, uh, with the lack of civilian experts in the field and the surplus of uh, experts from the former establishment, so with the Soviet mindset, who often dictated. Uh, and uh, some of them are still around, uh, appear from time to time, but uh, it's not the same like was until a few years ago and and uh, now we have an opportunity for questions uh, for the participants and i would just mention that panorama of global security environment is a comprehensive publication so may be useful for some of our uh, local experts as well because it includes well, it's uh, in printed form, it's hundreds of pages, 600 or 700 pages. So includes very comprehensive information about all regions and uh, 
contemporary security related issues or hard security, energy security, and so on in different regions of the world. And many of the issues, especially the newest ones, are available online as well uh, in PDF format. So it's possible uh, to get that publication and study it. And so uh, now I would uh, ask the audience if there are any questions or comments. If you have interest for this publication from the first was in the year 2003 and 2004, I can give you as a gift of, of my, from my, my, my uh, library, probably via, via embassy. Yes, perhaps. Uh... That would, although we don't have an embassy in Bratislava. But it is too much <laughs> books. <laughs> yes, that's a, a useful publication. I, I also had an opportunity to contribute to one of the issues. So, but uh, for those which are not available online, it would be great, of course, to have some. Uh, I think I don't know now because I was a found, founder or co-founder of, of this this project and the first years it was about the Slovakia the, the Slovak view to the to the to the whole war but after that we used a lot of participants or, or, or writer from the whole the world and now it is uh, outside me but it is possible i think that it it is on the website of the side of this sepal yeah that's where several of the issues are available and one thing i wanted to clarify so when in 2002 the parliament adopted several documents you mentioned that. Uh, yeah. Was it before or after the election? So the first or the second during the government? Uh, it was uh, during the first, first uh, during the during the government period. This we started in 1999 uh, with this uh, preparation without any any knowledge what it means to prepare this this uh, strategy document, but it is this first version was uh, a something like cabinet documents prepared by the by the Ministry of Defense with the people from the other uh, with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but engine was a Ministry of Defense because we need this this documents strategy uh, security strategy and then defense strategy for our preparation for for nato to change our our uh, armed forces so that uh, it was a long time but without uh, a good result and the in 2000 2000 and 2001 we prepared this this first two documents it means the security strategy and defense strategy and of course we we had the third strategic document it was military strategy it was a big discussion why we have three documents or three strategic documents first uh, was that czech republic uh, had also three documents because at that time we use a lot of lot of our friends from the Czech Republic to prepare something because we don't have we don't have educated people in, in that because the ministry federal ministry of defense was in Prague and not all Slovaks came came to Slovakia back back to Slovakia 
So, and uh, a second, why we have we have three documents because before we had national strategic uh, na national uh, security strategy, but it was confidential. This this top confidential document, and it, this document had three parties or three documents with the military documents. So it was problem how to change this 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 uh, this document because this document was uh, you have to say totally again our our membership because it was much more about the self defense in that time uh, after the mature mature uh, government so that in the first time we ha we had three uh, strategies and then the next strategy, next uh, documents uh, in 2005, after we enter NATO, we change into two documents. It is a uh, security strategy. It was open document because it was for the people to understand why and what is our problem, what is about the security problems, etc. And then we have this the defense strategy for armed forces or for defense, not for, only for armed forces. And then it is a plan, development plan for the armed forces, and etc. Okay. Thank you very much. And so, uh, yeah, uh, so we have a question from My name is Zorak. Vladimir, I have one question. Uh, in the, your country, I understand one of main difficult problem was security, special, special security bodies uh, or ministries reform. Uh, now in Armenia, we have uh, we can say branch of KGB, and I think it's very uh, difficult to uh, make some changes in this uh, national security office. Uh, what kind of recommendations you can, suggestions you can uh, tell us? Uh, you mean security service? Yes, yes. The national security service, because we probably you, you too we have the slovak information service it is a security security service and it is a civilian service and we have military military uh, intelligence service so uh, information yes intelligence service so it was the big uh discussion about if to underline the military under under security security information security intelligence service or or because we have with the military this uh, abroad intelligence and inside the Slovakia now we have one military military service and one this this uh, this uh, civilian uh, security and of course, it uh, it was very it was discussion for I think 10, 15 years to to create the the good good law for 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 this, but not uh, what was very important not to have this uh, service under the Ministry of of Interior. I know that it was a problem of Georgia. The the security service was under Ministry of Interior. And the first step uh, after the, 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 the change or, or the, of uh, the, the, its way to, to the well, uh, um, NATO and EU membership, it was to change this, this uh, 
underline the, minister, uh, the security service from the Ministry of, of Interior. I don't know. I don't know exactly how it is in, in Armenia. If it is only one organization on the, on the um, government or the premier or, or. Well, in the, in the 90s, it, there was some time a uh, joint ministry and that was a big mistake because uh, then minister contributed to the uh, a kind of a hello and uh, yeah hello can you hear yeah now we, now yes so uh, i just told we had this uh, joint ministry of interior and security in the 90s and then the minister was one of the main figures of the coup in 1998. Yes, I remember uh, our discussion about the national uh, security system and it was in 2003 or 2002 and of course the big problems was the situation center if would be uh, underlined on, on the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister of Interior, Minister of Defense, because of this same situation that the Minister of Minister uh, would be have a more information about about the situation inside and abroad of, of the Slovakia. That it is very difficult, and I think that it to to bring all plus and minus to to prepare the good configuration of, of this uh, service. 